I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the propels are abroad, and if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now these hot days, the mad blood stirring. Like one of these fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword on the table and says, God, give me no need for thee. By the operation of the second cup, draws him on the drawer. When indeed, there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come! Thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy. And as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. And what two? Nay, and there were two such. We should have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou! Why thou wilt quarrel with a man that hast a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast? Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no other reason but because thou hast hazel eyes. What I, but an I, would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat. Yet thy head hath been beaten as addle as an egg for quarreling. Thou hast quarreled with a man for coughing in the street, because he hath wakened thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. Didst thou not fall out with a trailer for wearing his new doublet before Easter, with another for tying his new shoes with old ribbon? And yet thou wilt tutor me from quarreling? And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art, any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple? Oh, simple! By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Gentlemen, good evening. Can I have a word with one of you? But one word with one of us? Couple it with something else. Why not a word and a blow? Should find me apt enough to that, sir. And hey. You'll give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. Consort? What? Dost thou make us minstrels? And now make minstrels of us. Look to hear nothing but discord. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Zounds, consort! We talk in the public haunts of men. Either withdraw into some private place, or reason coldly of your grievances. Here, all eyes gaze on us. Eyes were made for gazing, then let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Will peace be with you, sir? Here comes my man. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Mary, go before to field. He'll be your followers. Your worship in the same may call him man. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none. Therefore, farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. I do protest, I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise, till thou shalt know the reason of my love, and so good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, a la stoccata, carries it away. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What wouldst thou have with me? Good. King of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives, that I make bold with all, and as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of his pilcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears, ere it be out. I am for you.
up in Volio, beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince had expressly, hath forbid this bandying in Verona streets. Hold, Tybalt, good Mercutio! I am sped. Is he gone and have nothing? What? Are you hurt? Aye, aye. A scratch, a scratch. But tis enough. <sighs> Page, fetch me a surgeon. Tis not so deep as a well, nor wide as a church door. But tis enough. Twill serve. Ask for me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. I am... Peppered, I warrant, for this world. A plague of both your houses. Sounds a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat. To scratch a man to death. A braggart, a rogue, a villain. That fights by the book of arithmetic. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. <coughs> Help me up into some house, Benvolio. I shall faint. A plague of both your houses. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got this mortal hurt. In my behalf, my reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, then an hour hath been my cousin. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate. Uh, and in my temper softened valor's steel. Romeo, Romeo, Ray Mercutio's death! Here comes the furious Tibble back again. Alive in triumph and Mercutio slain? Away to heaven, respect of lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tibble, take the villain back again. That late thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little way above our heads. Staying for thine, Keep both him company. Either thou or I, or both must go with him. Well, this shall determine that. You flip first. Heads. Away, be gone, the citizens are up in Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed, the prince will doom their death, if thou art taken. Hence, be gone, away! Oh, I am fortune's fool! Which way ran he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt, that murderer! Which way ran he? There lies that Tybalt. Up, sir, go with me. I charge thee in the prince's name, obey. Where are the vile beginners of this fray? O oh, noble prince, I can discover all. The unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo, that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Tybalt, my cousin, no, oh, my brother's child! O oh, prince, O oh, cousin, husband, oh, the blood is spilled by my dear kinsman. Prince says thou art true, for blood of our shed, not a Montague. O oh, cousin, cousin! Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? <coughs> Tybalt, your slave, who Romeo's hand did slay. Romeo, that spoke him fair, bid him think how nice the quarrel was, and urged with 
all your highest play conclusion. <coughs> all this, uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with this unruly spleen of Tybalt's death to peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bolt Mercutio's <coughs> breast, who, all is hot, turns deadly point to point, and with a martial scorn, with one hand beats, the cold death aside, with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries out loud, hold friends, friends part, and swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their foil points, and twixt them rushes, underneath whose arm, an envious thrust from Tybalt hits his life, stout Mercutio, and then Tybalt fled. But by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge, and no, <laughs> and taught they go light, lightning, for ere I could draw apart that one, was thou stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly. This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. He is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in the black strife, and all those with he could but kill one life. I beg for justice, which our prince must give. Romeo slew Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio. Who now the prince of his dear blood doth owe? Not Romeo, Prince. He was Mercutius' friend. His fault concludes, but what the law should end, the life of Tybalt. And for that offense, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceedings. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie of bleeding. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses. Nor tears nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste. Else when he is found, that hour is his last. But bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murderers, pardoning those that kill.